Douglas PUD is nearing completion of a new 230 kV transmission line, which will extend 13 miles from Douglas Switchyard in the Rocky Reach Dam area, southeast to the Rapid Switchyard in the Rock Island area. The route follows an existing transmission corridor, thus allowing for our county's population growth with minimal interference from transmission lines. The line will provide redundancy, increase reliability, and improve voltage stability of the transmission system. The transmission line project got underway in June of 2012 when potential bidders for construction were invited to tour the actual site. And, uh, Jerry Kyle is the PUD's distribution the supervisor today. in charge of the construction process. Provide a good bid and uh, we want to spend most of the day out in the field. We'll pull over at some vantage spots where we can see the whole project. We'll visit several of the stakes and there's pretty good access road or easement, easement road that we'll be able to drive right down the route. Working with the adjacent property owners is a priority for Douglas PUD. John Brown is the PUD's property supervisor. There aren't a whole lot of property owners along this alignment, and Douglas County is a pretty close-knit community, so we work with our property owners really closely, super sensitive to their issues. This actually is a really good view of the corridor right here. You can take a look and you can see all the Carsonite posts that basically show where all of the structure locations will be going through the transmission corridor. Construction began with foundation work near Douglas Switchyard. Concrete foundations would be used at many of the structures. Just got done installing the reinforcing cage for this tower and uh, cleaning up the loose ends preparatory to putting in the bolt cage. When the concrete comes up to the point where it's just below the bottom of that cage, which is probably about 12 feet from the top, they'll stop pouring long enough to hang that bolt cage in there and make sure that it's perfectly centered, oriented, clamp it down so that it can't move, and then finish the pour. It, they call it the bisect on your bolts, and as you can see those bolts, there's 16 bolts, but they're in a different pattern. And, and if you put them in and just drop them in and don't get them where they're supposed to be, what happens when you put your pole on there and you get up there, your, your arms might be on one side. Instead of, you know, facing the wire, they could be off to the side. You know, they're not gonna attach right to the pole. The quality of the concrete foundation is vital to the stability of the transmission line. The largest foundation structure and biggest concrete pour is number 75, located in an orchard near the south end of the line. I am testing the air in the slump of the concrete. Well, every pour has a certain tolerance it has to be within. And then this one, you just have to do the air test and everything and make sure it's within that specification. Um, you just fill it up and you do three lifts and then you rod it to mix it up, you pressurize it, and then release the air out of it. You release all the pressure, and then it tells you how much air is in it. Or how much air is in the concrete. So one uh, and then, or I'm pressurizing the pot, so I'm not putting air in the concrete, I'm just pressurizing this right here. And then, ready? How much percentage of air, yeah, is in there. Other foundation sites of interest were five and six that are situated on a very steep slope. Commonwealth Associates designed the transmission line. Dean Scott is the owner's on-site representative. No, we have three structures uh, down there at the north end of the line that is on very steep slope. It's got a steep road that has switchbacks down to it, and they've actually got the worst one out of the way. That's number five, because there they brought in a six-wheel drive concrete truck, and uh, on the switchbacks, there wasn't enough room to make the turn, so they basically had to back uh, down one switchback, go forward, and then go backwards again on a very steep slope, one that makes you very nervous if you're looking over the edge. They um, seem to be used to doing this work, and uh, they did that just fine, so I think we're home free there. Uh, it's just kind of an older road they used to put the power line in back when they did the first portion of it. We had to pull down and back up twice to get down the switchbacks because the truck was too big to turn around, and then we 
made a turnaround down at the bottom so we could come back out nose first. I held five yards at a time off the hill. Um, I believe it took probably, I think about probably 80 yards or so close to to fill the holes. So that made 16 trips off the hill. Wasn't really that bad. We had a couple of loose spots in the road that we packed in with the machines and hauled some gravel into and made it work just right. The structures are individually designed for each location on the line. Ten types of structures will be built. Five drop-off locations were used for various parts. Yeah, this is Mr. Uh, Donine's wheat field that's near structure number 32 near Badger Mountain Road. And uh, he's allowed the contractor to come in here and have equipment and materials delivered. And then the contractor from here uh, takes the individual pieces out to the individual sites. Each structure has uh, anywhere from three to six uh, pieces, and so they do have to unload them and sort them. The w section that is right here on this truck that has kind of the black coating, uh, that particular section goes down in the ground. It'll be a direct embed section. And then there's sections that they slip. Uh, it's a slip joint, and they uh, put one section on top of the other by just slipping the top over the bottom. While construction proceeded, Rapid Switchyard was being prepared to receive the new line. We're installing a dead end structure for the new 230,000 volt line that will be coming from Douglas Switchyard. And here's where it'll terminate at Rapid Switchyard. Right now they're installing the legs and one of the first cross members, a total of three. On each side are going to be a set of switches. We'll also have vertically there on the lower racks um, a set of voltage transformers. And then on the top, you can already see mounted, we've got arresters. Today, our contractor Patelco is in the process of pulling a two and a half mile section of new wire, or conductor in industry jargon. Today they pulled in the first conductor, and just yesterday they got the pulling lines in. This is a double circuit section of line where we had to take an outage on existing line while we set new structures, took down the old structures, transferred the wire, and then we had to bring in a lightweight pulling line to each structure which is connected to the high strength rope to uh, pull in the conductor. And we wanted to be careful not to damage the trees. Behind me is the contractor's tensioner puller. The yellow rope is a high strength rope that's connected to the conductor which is situated two and a half miles from here and they pull it in at about two and a half miles an hour. So as they're pulling it, they're keeping it under about 4,500 pounds tension so that the conductor does not drag on the ground or fences or electrical lines. When we pull it up at full tension, uh, it'll be at about 12,000 pounds, depending on the temperature of the day. When the pulling operations are complete, there'll be over 45 miles of new conductor.